that really we are together in all of this. So, um, you know, there's something about being able to see that your problem, whatever you're experiencing, is very similar to what someone else is experiencing halfway around the world. And there is something about that that just, it, it you know, circumvents cultures and and places and geography and everything just knowing you're not alone you're not alone whatever it is so anyway so feel free you're joining in um tell me where tell me where you're coming in from and let me know um and and i will also if i have any um time at the end i've got a lot so we'll see what i've got but um, i'm hoping to have some time at the very end to um cover any chat questions so if you did not get a chance to send in your questions to me um, or you're joining through YouTube and didn't have how to contact me um, right there in front of you. Um, type in your question in the chat, and at the end, I'll come back and I'll look at that and um, and get back to you there. Okay. Um, Lolly, hi, Lolly from South Africa, and Misty from Oregon, and Katrina from Toronto. Nice to see you all. And and whether it's yeah, morning, afternoon, evening, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. So feel free. Um, tell me where you are. I love knowing that part of it. Um, okay. So for my first one I'm answering tonight is from Kelly and, um, Kelly, um, I'm answering yours. You came in a little late here, but your question is so good. I wanted to address it on here because it's really important. So, um, I think a lot of people are going to relate to this. So here's what Kelly wrote to me. And hi, Michelle. I'm answering yours, Michelle. You're coming up here soon. Um, Kelly wrote, why do I feel as if I'm the only one trying to work on my relationship? We've been fighting like crazy. And he tells me he's coming over and then he doesn't show up. He doesn't call me anymore unless he needs something. We don't hang out and it seems like he ghosts me. I'm crazy in love with him. And I don't feel like he feels the same. Why do I try if he doesn't want to be with me? Okay. Really good question. Why do I try if he doesn't want to be with me? I mean, there's so much in here. So what I want to say is we will always try. We have it so programmed into us. We, we are so conditioned to try and try and try and try and never stop trying until someone eventually quits for us. But we don't quit. There's a woman I'm, I'm coaching right now who's going through this. And she actually was the one to pull the plug on this relationship that's going nowhere. And you know what she's, she's struggling with the most is the uncomfortable feeling that she ended it, that she did this first, that it's, it's her, it's, it's, she feels responsible. She feels the weight of the responsibility because she did it. And all she can hear are all these voices that said, you didn't try hard enough. You could have done something more. You should have done this. You should have done that. That's all she can hear. So this is what we do. So the first thing, I mean, that's the easiest part of this to answer is why do I try? Well, it's because it's so programmed in us. We actually believe that if we keep trying, that eventually something's going to change. And we don't just think that that might happen. That is so ingrained at the cellular level. And that means it's in ourselves. It's in our bones. It's in our very core of who we are. That is a really hard thing to change with just telling yourself what you see is is the way reality is. I mean, your head can see this. Your head can can recognize, yeah, this isn't changing. But to actually stop doing what you have been doing forever, what you've been told is the thing that you do and it's how to turn this around, yeah, not going to happen that easily. So I think the first thing to acknowledge here is you're up against a lot if you expect. You're, I mean, you're up against history. You're up against your entire history. And then beyond that, you are up against... Your, what has been passed down to you through the generations from all the women who have gone before you in your family who have told you, who, who have carried this with them within their beings and have passed this along to you, essentially telling you this without actually telling you. But this gets carried down generationally, the messaging that I can change him if I just try hard enough, if I just follow the rules closely enough, if I just do what I have been told I'm supposed to be doing and, and something's going to change. And the reality is there is like 1% of the time that that happens. I mean, it is so rare compared to how many people that this never happens for. It is so rare. So 
that that is the problem with that and yet we will believe that and believe that and hold on to that and hey that becomes our everything and and most of this the most important part of this piece is it's subconscious so you think that you have some control over this you think that it's just a matter of telling you something and this is why you you come away with something like this and and you are so sure okay i get this i know this i'm going to do it you've got it so there in your head and yet what happens is you come away you don't have my support there you don't have me telling you this right there so so clearly you don't have the support of other women here who are who you know feel this and get this you go back and you go back to your own situation and you go back to your own reality and it is the hardest thing to remember that feeling you had because what you feel is what is in you what has always been there and you're trying to you're trying to counteract that with with like just this little bit that of of the confirmation that it's it's this is what you're doing and this is why it's so hard there's no way it is so hard to be able to do this it's possible it, it is possible i i did it others every every call there's someone um every week that i talk to who's able to do this but but it's hard and that's what i want to acknowledge it is it is not easy i think a lot of people sell you short in saying or do you a disservice really and, and make you feel like it's so easy and your friends probably don't make you feel any better right by by telling you oh what's wrong just kick him to the curb you can do this you don't need to keep doing this i mean yeah we know this right i mean we know it but doing it putting it into practice actually being able to leave here and 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 think about this and do it is a whole other thing so i think that's so important to just acknowledge that this is not easy this is not easy but it is doable it's just you can't expect it to happen overnight but starting with the fact that you can recognize where this comes from and why it's so hard is a big part of it because once you accept yourself for who you are it makes change so much easier because until you accept yourself you're fighting yourself you're beating yourself up you're you're giving in to, you're you're basically flying in the floating in the wind because you are believing all these other messages that tell you something about yourself that is simply not true and it is really hard to combat that with just your thoughts so the first place is to to accept this is why this is why it's so hard this is why it feels that way and to recognize that okay so in order to be able to change this not only do i have to work on what is going on in my head so that i can change these thoughts but you actually have to try something different it's in the actions because you absolutely need that confirmation that that positive reinforcement to counter all of this other messaging that you are actually going to be able to change this and without that without these other experiences to draw from without these other people who who are like on your side and see you and light up because they see you and they're like oh there she is that's my person i mean you can get that from anyone you can get that from anyone it doesn't have to be some guy there are so many people who will absolutely love who you are and it's that feeling we're going for not trading it guy for another guy because that that's not always going to happen overnight and not always should happen overnight or it's the wrong one you're you're coming into on the rebound but you can get that feeling just from the energy of having someone recognize you and see you and and identify the fact that you're you're their people okay and that is huge huge okay so um so that that is why um so the reason why you feel as if you're the only one trying to work on your relationship is because you are the only one trying to work on it and you're the only one doing it this way you're the only one who keeps on trying and keeps on trying and keeps on doing what you're doing which obviously isn't working and so you're but it's all how that's all you know how to do i mean so again grace here right acceptance love for yourself you're doing the best you can with what you what you know how to do is the reality and so when you say we've been fighting like crazy he tells you you know he ghosts you he doesn't call you unless he needs something um and you say you're crazy in love with him i mean you know what you're crazy in love with you're crazy in love with the hope that he brings you you're crazy in love with his potential you're crazy in love with the idea of him and somewhere in there yeah you can probably say i'm crazy about him because all those things you equate with him but the reality is if it was just a guy who you were fighting with who 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 keeps ghosting you who is unreliable and consistent only calls you if he needs something i mean think about these behaviors there is no way that you would actually say i love this person if that was just 
this description of this person and you were asked to quite uh, of some stranger and you were asked would you love someone who treated you like this would you love someone who this is what is what is happening in your relationship would you ever ever say i love this person no but you know why you say you love someone because we all do i used to do this with every single one of them we love them because it's their potential. And because this feeling they elicit in us with the hope, with the potential, with this feeling that, wow, this guy, wow, if I can just bring this back around to what it was, this is going to be a fire. This is going to be amazing. I am going to feel so good because he makes me feel so bad. But do you understand that? It is because he makes you feel so bad that there is all this energized potential to making yourself feel good because he makes you feel so bad. That's where this comes from. He makes you feel so bad first. And the idea that no one can make you feel bad, well, we, we've we already covered that because we, we allow someone to make us feel a certain way because the way we feel and the way we pick up on things, we feel everything. And so, yeah, I mean, we can say no one can make you feel bad, but we do feel it. We feel it all because we feel everything and we are so sensitive to that. And we are so sensitive to any sign of rejection, any sign of that. So that's, that's why, that's why you say, so I would go back and I would look at the fact that, okay, is this love? I mean, you are right. He, he can say he loves you, but I mean, what is there that he, he loves you because what he's doing isn't treating you loving, but I'll tell you this, he's treating you in the best way that he can. He's giving you the best he can. So, so what I would do with this is I would look at, okay, besides everything else I talked about, you can all absorb all that. But the other thing that I would do is I would look at the fact that the only way this is going to work is if you accept him for who he is. So whatever you're fighting about, whatever is going on, the only way that you are going to change this is if you change the way that you are approaching this, your mindset about this. You don't have to change yourself. That You don't have to do anything. Don't change. Don't change yourself in terms of, I just got to do this, I just got to do that. But what you have to do is you have to change. You have to change your expectation that he is going to be something different than he is. Because all those fights, fights are always about your expectations. Fights are always because you have an expectation that he's going to be different than the way he actually is or that he's going to show up differently or something's going to change. So you have to look at this as this is who he is. This is the man you're in love with. And if you have a problem with this, if you cannot accept him the way he is, all you're doing is setting yourself up for more heartbreak because the fights aren't going to stop until you accept the fact that who he is is who he is. And once you and, and you don't have to take it personally because it is just who he is. Once you tr stop trying to change him and you stop trying to, to fulfill his potential, once you get all of that focus off of him and changing him and making him something into what you need him to be, once you shift that focus onto you and you go out and you find your life and your happiness and your joy and your people and and your energy that that is reflected back to you and the people who mirror the true who you are your true self because they actually enjoy you and like you and want to spend time with you not this guy who's doing the opposite like you don't have to cut everything off with him you don't have to just you don't have to go in that direction yet if you're not there yet because that's the worst thing you can do is prematurely end something before you're ready we all everyone goes back every or else you're you're stalking him outside his place if it's i mean whatever it is it's if you're you're going to become obsessed with him if you end something too early you become obsessive um and 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 that's a whole other thing that's and then it's like doubly um worse trying to get you out of there so so until you are ready until you have clarity on what you're going to do with him focus on the piece where you take all of this energy that you're putting into him and you put it into yourself and that's not cliche it means go find the people and the things the interests the go 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 find go create more of a life for yourself than you have been living only hanging on to him and 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 fighting with him and putting all this energy into it. that energy is beautiful but it's got to go somewhere else in order to change this all right so kelly i hope that's helpful um yeah that's uh that's what i would do with that okay and we'll go from there um all right so the next one i've got is how to let go okay this is from addy so addy are you here tonight and hi nancy from port angeles i got your question coming up 
um, and ask Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl, to uh, your sweet from Ohio. Nice to see you on here. Um, all right, so Addie, I'm going to get to you now. You may get this in the recording. You can go back at the end and you can come back if, you, if you're joining late and you miss yours. Don't worry, just go back. Um, you can rewind. Okay, Addie wants to know how to let go. I mean, how many of us have needed to know how to let go? I mean, how many of you need to, to know how to let go now, right? I mean, letting go is hard. So if you if you need to let go, hands up. This one's for you. So you're in good company here. How to let go. <laughs> All right. Maybe this is because we have only been taught how to hang on, right? Like, think about it, right? Like, what is the opposite of letting go? Hanging on, hanging on tighter, hanging on more tightly. I, I, what do we do? I mean, that is just, that is what we learn how to do. Just hold on tighter, hold on tighter. Someone, someone starts giving us signals that they're pulling away. What do we do? We hang on tighter. We hang on tighter. It's ingrained. We learn it. We got to unlearn these things. We accept it first. And then gradually we learn to let go of that. But that's, again, it's so ingrained. So how to let go? She writes, I'm 46 years old. I've got two, two, two teenage kids. My husband asked for a divorce over two months ago, very unexpectedly. Oh, that is so hard, unexpectedly. I never saw it coming. He was a Christian man with high standard family values. He'd never leave me or cheat on me. Both things happen. I am so sorry, Addie. That's uh, okay. I depended on him financially, but also emotionally. I thought I'd never be alone. I thought we'd grow old together. I gave him 17 years of my life. He left me broken emotionally, financially, and physically. I didn't finish college because there was always the need for me to do to work full time. Plus, I'd come home to clean, do dishes, laundry, take care of the dogs. I hear you. Take care of the dogs, the kids. Take care of everything. <laughs> Even if even if, I mean, this is our role. Even if our husbands pitch in and help out, if they're all there, what do we do? It's like the martyr, right? Let me show you. I can do everything. Everything. All right. That's, yeah, we learned that. Okay. I ended up exhausted at the end of the day. Of course you did. He worked a couple of overtime hours most days. And when he got home, he'd make his dinner plate and watch TV. He didn't really help around the house. When I look back, I know I wasn't happy. I didn't feel that love that a husband who's crazy in love with his wife should have. He manipulated me psychologically, but I didn't see it at that time. Over a year ago, he started to talk to another, another colleague at work who's 10 years younger than him. They started to work out together and communicate and tag each other on Facebook. I think he realized that's the woman he wanted. With a career, younger, prettier. I'm sorry. That hurts. Of course, she'd given the attention he wanted. Honeymoon stage when you're first dating. Yep. He fell in love with her. I admired and respected him so much. I had him on a pedestal, but he changed so much. Why, after everything I went through in my marriage, feeling less than, manipulating me all the time, making me feel that everything was all my fault, struggling financially because I didn't make enough. And even if I asked him for money, he seemed more and more upset to give it to me. Why do I still love him? My friends and sisters keep telling me I should hate him, not love him, that I should be angry, not sad. I realize my self-esteem needs work. I'm emotionally codependent, perhaps addicted to pain. I don't love myself enough. I'm so tired of crying and hurting. He keeps showing his true colors more and more with the divorce settlement. Yet I'd take him back in a heartbeat. Why? How do I change this? Oh, yeah, mine too, Lisa. Mine too. Um, Addie? Yeah, I mean, I think we all feel for you, right? Um, yeah, we take him back. We go through all that, cheated on us, everything, right? We take him back. We take him back. I mean, it's the same why. You can go back and listen to my answer to the other woman I just talked to on here and answer um because yeah that's why programming right you're the martyr that's what we do we do everything we put all the all the effort in we, we take care of everybody and everything and it's all supposed to work out at the end no one's supposed to leave us no one's supposed to find someone younger going through that honeymoon stage and be when everything's so young and early and and she's all that at the beginning well you were all that at the beginning too right so it's like how, how does that happen it's not supposed to happen that way. You did everything right, right? You gave up everything. 
You gave up everything, and yet now he could throw it in your face, right? I never asked you to. How many of us have heard that before? I never asked you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, if, if you, we do this because it's ingrained, because it's programmed, it's conditioned into us. This is what we do. We, we love, and we love, and we give, and we give, and we give, and we give. So, yeah, um, we're, uh, yes, you're codependent. Codependency, I mean, it, codependency is something that never fully leaves us, no matter how much you work you do on yourself. When you're in a relationship, the program, it's not just, I mean, our entire, the, the way we are brought up as women, um, unless you were born in the last, you know, 10, 20 years max, I mean, we have been brought up to be codependent, right? How are you feeling? Well, how's my family feeling? How, how's my husband feeling? How's my boyfriend feeling? You know, I mean, that's, we're brought up with that. So, I mean, that is ingrained. That's normal. Our normal is so far off whatever should be normal, but it's our normal, you know? So this is what we accept. This is our normal. This is who we are. This is what we're brought up with. But we can change that because once we recognize it, there's hope. Once we recognize it, then we can realize, okay, well, this is who I have been. This is how I was brought up to be. I'm, I've colored in the lines. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. So why does why does something like this happen, right? All right. So basically, um, yeah, I, I just I feel for you for all of this, and I I think I'm not telling you, um, you know, what anything that's too surprising um, on why you love him, why you still want to be with him. Um, and, and so what, what you got to do, Addie, here's what you got to do, Addie. You got to recognize, okay. Yeah. You did everything right based on what you were supposed to do. Okay. You did everything right. Everything exactly the way you were supposed to do it. And you were supposed to have the, the other ending. You were supposed to have the ending that ended happily. Um, this was never supposed to happen. That was what we were told. That is, you, 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 you didn't do anything wrong here because you did exactly what you were told to do. And so the reality is we were told the wrong thing because there are no guarantees. You, you get married, you give everything, you give all of your heart and soul, you do everything. And you know what? Sometimes this happens through no fault of your own. You know, he, he gets bored. He's, he's tired. You know, what do we do when we're bored and we're tired? What do we do? You know, we dig in and we keep on, we'll figure it out. And we keep giving more and we keep trying to do more. And we think, oh, if I just do more, if I just contribute more, it's up to me. I got to fix this. You know, rarely, rarely do we go get help for this and find our own support. Usually we're just in whatever relationship we're in, just feeling worse and worse and just losing more and more of ourselves and becoming more and more codependent and, and walking on eggshells because we're just, we're, we go into extra turbocharged fix it mode you know when your kids get older and they're teenagers and they don't need you as much and you start getting teenage behavior and you're like what am i even doing this for does anyone appreciate me is there no one who appreciates me you know and then you got your dogs and they love unconditionally right so yeah we're le we're left with the dogs right and it's just heartbreaking yeah so i'm sorry you know yeah it's it's all of that um, you learn to accept pain, right? You learn to accept heartbreak. I don't think you're addicted to it. Um, and then loving ourselves. I mean, come on. There, there's never been any time to love ourselves. I mean, where were you ever taught how to love yourself? Where? I mean, it's it becomes this cliche that's that you even mention that someone will make make fun of that and tell you, you know, love yourself enough. Oh yeah, that you know they'll make fun of it. Yeah, we we didn't learn that. We didn't learn that at all. Your your sisters and your your friends who keep telling you that you should have um, you should hate him. No, we don't know how to hate. Yeah, but it's under there somewhere. But yeah, we, we, we don't know how to hate. We just know how to keep pouring on the love. Love us. Love us. Keep just pouring on that love and someone please love us back. You know, and that that's what's going on. So anyway, I hope I hope talking about it like this helps. And I hope hearing it like this really helps because um I know you're tired of crying and I know you're tired of hurting. It's a different perspective that you need and it's something that you need to be able to see. And I can help you see that. But um, again, this is a small snapshot. You know, there, there was a woman who went through this in, you know, six months 
of her crying on the phone to me every time. I had all different things I exercises and things I, you know, not actual exercises, you know, the physical kind. Well, that's always good too. Something you can do to be active, you know, discover dance again, swimming, you know, being in water, doing things. Um, but, you know, I gave her different things to try doing to, to help herself out of this. And she wasn't ready for any of them until, you know, at least six months. That's nothing. A year, you know, I don't know. Everyone's different, right? There is no, how long will it take me to get over this? But I will tell you this, how you change it, how you change it is start with a place of accepting that you did everything you were told to do and you did everything right. It's not your fault that it ended up this way. If you could go back, yeah, you would do things so differently because you know what? No one ever tells us this until until we it happens, until we're, we're, we're invested. Until, you put 17 years into this. Of course you knew things weren't right. Of course you knew that everything wasn't perfect. But you know what we learned to do with that? You just, you, you, you squash that down. You just, you, you don't talk about that. You don't bring it up. You don't ever address it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, what are you going to say? So we just pour more on and pour more on and keep giving and giving and giving and giving. Addie, you change it one step at a time, okay? You change it by, first of all, going easy on yourself and accepting the reality of what is, okay? And then you change it you change it by reminding yourself who you are slowly and gently and lovingly, okay, graciously. You know, go back to that, I know, cliche, everything, right? Yeah, go back to that little girl you used to be. Go back to that 9-year-old, that 10-year-old, before you got all the messaging that started. Go back to when you actually knew, when you were the, the strongest version of yourself ever. Go back to that. How did you see the world? What's the world like? Where did you see the possibilities? Where did you see the hope? What was life like back then? I tell you, the older we get, the younger we get. Because we don't realize, we don't realize everything that we are going to learn one day. We just go through the motions. We just do the next thing we're supposed to do until way down the road. And then like this, there's a wake-up call. And then that's when we start getting younger. So go back there. You, you're gonna, you, you, you can relive your life in a sense, in some way, whether it's just figuratively, emotionally, mentally, or if there's some aspects of it that happen that feel more real. But you are gonna go back, and you are, you are going to relive, in some sense, your life. And it's going to have a different outcome. There's still so much hope. There is so, so much hope. I have seen, I've seen so much. I've seen so much of how this propels us to do things and become who we have never even imagined we could have become. And I have seen us become happy again. And I've seen us become so full of hope again ourselves. And I have seen us look back on today and see what happened to you as being something that happened for you, even if you don't understand that. And I know that's cliche too. There's so many of these. And so when you hear them, it's really hard to believe that that could be possible for you. But I'm just saying I've seen it too many times. I know it is. So one step at a time, you go back there, reclaim the life that you lost for yourself. Okay. And step by step, I can walk through it with you if you want, but you do it. You do it. You put one foot in front of the other. You go through the motions. Okay, what are the absolute bare minimum things that need to get to get done during this time? Like, what are the bare minimum that you have to do? And you do that. You do the next thing, the next thing. You know, you got to do something with your teens. You got to do something with your dogs. You, you got to take care of yourself, okay? If there's times, I tell this to everyone. I, I've talked to so many women. Some women gain weight, you know, and they binge eat, and they they th that's their comfort. Um you know, and, and there's other women who do the opposite. And so if you can't, if you're not eating, there's a lot of women who just lose their appetite. You can't eat. If, if that's you, drink your calories. I swear by that. Every single breakup, heartbreak that I went through, um, I could, I could not eat. I could not eat. And it was, and I couldn't keep food down. So I drank my calories. That's the most practical piece of advice I'll ever give you. If you can't take care of yourself by nourishing yourself with food, just pour it all into a blender, mix the whole thing up, and, and drink it. 
okay, and do that. If you got a meal that you can't eat, and and I don't know, you can try that too. I've always said that if I could put all my meals into a blender and blend them and drink them, um, that'd be better. So, <laughs> all right, you take care, Addie, and um, yeah, keep me posted, okay. If you need someone to walk through this with you, I'll have a special offer for you too, okay. You take care. All right, next one is um, Ashley. Ashley wants to know something real simple. Ashley wants to know, will I find a different partner than the one I have now? Okay, Ashley. So you go find a different partner other than the one you have right now, and you're going to find him. Okay? Because yours is real simple to answer. There are way too many people on the face of this earth for you not to find a different partner than the one you know now. If you decide that, it's going to happen for you. I mean, that's the that's the easiest way to see this. Um, you put that energy into someone else you you look at the fact that this one you're with um that you're done you've tried everything and there's some real issues here and some problems will i find a different partner yeah we can all find one it's just finding someone who you want because most of the time we want the guy that you're talking about here so i would look at that i'm going to turn this around and ask you um why don't you want the partner that you have now why don't you want to Put the effort into that and i'm assuming you're putting the effort into that because that is usually not something we lack so what i'm going to say to that is put the effort that you are putting into thinking and imagining all these different scenarios and wondering can someone tell you if you are going to be with someone different put that energy into creating a, a different and a better life for yourself put that energy into becoming who you want to be because that's always it, right? I mean, what if you could relive your past? What if you could relive? What if you could go back in time and create a whole different life for yourself, right? Well, most of us are like freaked out, scared to death to even think about that because it just seems so impossible. And, and how's any of that going to change? But there is so much energy out there in terms of what we give to men who were trying to figure out, will there be someone else? Because there's so many issues. So when you give all that energy to that per I, most of the time we just want to change the person we're with most of the time we just want them to be different so put that effort put that energy into you focusing on like what makes you happy and where can you find your happiness you don't have to go cheat on them you can just go find people and and hobbies and interests and and places just even going somewhere just being around different energy you don't even have if, if you're not even that if you're more of an introvert you can do this online too just go mingle online it doesn't have to be it it doesn't have to be the be all and end all it doesn't have to be something amazing it doesn't have to be this thing to write home about or tell all your friends about it doesn't have to be any of that all it needs to be is just switch up this energy here find some people who actually want you not these guys that you're trying to get to want you to make want you to, to want you back and all that the more you focus on finding getting those needs met elsewhere the more you're gonna have the guy who's right there in front of you all of a sudden taking notice of you something shifted something's changed there's a new energy here okay that's what happens i see this happen all the time all the time these women's come to me hopeless some of them take forever to finally reach out and book a session and then all of a sudden it's like wow in one week one week you have the power to change your energy and change the relationship one week one week i mean it's literally i mean it's not always that easy of course but sometimes it's just so obvious this one woman told me that she just literally um was was playing house she fell into this thing where she gets so excited about some guy and she starts playing house with him and and as soon as that happens it's like she becomes codependent and she becomes all needy and the energy totally shifts and she hates herself because she recognizes it happening and so we just had a talk about what she needs to do to make sure she doesn't go in that mode and she tried it for a week between our first and our second calls she's like oh my god this is like this works well, of course it works because the two of you are attracted because of that energy what happened in the beginning was because of this energy you change that back from this you know what do you call it you know the, this heavy heavy taking care of everybody you know um playing house 
you know, being the, the, the mother and mothering him, right? Trying to control him. Mothering him is AKA, you know, short for also known as controlling him. He's going to pick up on that. And he's going to, he's, he's, there's no way he's going to be romantically excited about you. There's no way he's going to be, I mean, if he's a nice guy, he won't leave you, but it's certainly not going to be good. All right. So Ashley, yeah, that's how I'd answer that for you. Okay. Um, here is Caroline. Okay. Okay, Caroline. Caroline's got two quick questions. Okay. Caroline, are you here? Okay, Caroline. Um, you'll get this on the replay then, I guess. You can back up if you join a little bit later. Nancy and Michelle, I'm co still coming for you guys. Um, okay. Caroline writes, um, Hi, Jane. So the first thing she wants to know um hi jane i'm gonna read this to you in full it's got a lot in here but i think you'll i think i think a lot of you will see yourselves in here hi jane i really like um to know if i can if i'm going to be able to get social security and disability because i'm not working i survive on getting money off family and friends and the savings i had or will I win the lottery to get some money so I can pay all my bills? My health has gotten worse. I've got a lot of health problems. That's why I can't work anymore. I'd love to have a job and be able to support myself like I used to. I haven't worked in two years. My savings are nearly gone. Now I'm stressed, thinking, how can I survive? My kids owe me a lot of money. I pray that they'll pay me back soon. I hope I can get a miracle of some sort. I need a miracle. So I want to talk to you about that one first because... You talk about your ex in a minute, but I want to talk about this one, Caroline, because what's the most important part of this here is that you, if, if you have lent money, see, I'm seeing boundaries all over the place here. In fact, I, I see this with everything. Um, actually, Caroline, uh, you've written me so much here. I'm not going to have time to get to all of this because um, I want to get to some others. But I can tell you that you've got a number one, a number two, a number three, a number four. So you've got all these four different things. But what I'm going to tell you is that we're going to fix this, or at least there's the potential to fix it, um, if you understand what I'm talking about here, and I think you will, um, if you just look at the boundaries here, okay? Because in all of these issues you're talking about, everything's about boundaries. You have tapped uh, into this here. You, you, it's, it's all in here. You can't just pray someone pays you back soon when you have lent the money and they actually owe you this money. If you need this money, if you're so struggling to survive, if your health is such that you haven't been able to work, um, and, and this has all come down to you have given and given and given and given money and all this, um, and you need it, and now you're asking for a miracle and you're looking for miracles because you have so been affected by your generosity or what you felt maybe was your obligation. But I will tell you this, your kids have a lot more potential to make money than you are when your health is shot. Okay. When, when you're not feeling like you're going to be able to work again and you want to, and, and all of this and, and your savings are nearly gone, you can't deplete yourself. Okay. So, and this applies to, to everything in your life. But, but this is the strongest example of that. You need to ask them to pay you back soon. You need to tell them that you're no longer in a position where you can be out this money to them. I have a feeling you, you never really had it in the first place, but you probably gave and gave because you didn't want them to not love you. Because that goes into this deep thing here. We give and we give and we give and we give amazes me how much you give to someone um, without thinking about what about me? How am I going to be right? Because it's just what we're supposed to do. I mean, there's one thing about being generous. And I love, you know, being generous is a beautiful thing. And But this is a whole other thing here. When when you have depleted your own savings, you've depleted yourself, your resources that you had to, to survive to. So 
boundaries here. You need to tell them that you are no longer in a position to be out this money and they need to come up with a payment plan to pay you back. And you need to know what that is. And if they have issues of their own where they can't work, then they need to figure out some way to pay back something. There needs to be something happening so that this isn't just a wish and a prayer and a hope for some miracle that you're going to come into some money when, you know, they owe you this money, you know, and you can't just be praying. They'll pay you back soon because that's an actual practical, logical thing um, that they need to pay you back. So something you want, you want them to have some kind of responsibility here where there is some kind of a schedule for how they're going to pay you back. Even if it's just a little bit amount of money every month, whatever it is, or every paycheck, you need to talk about that. I know that's going to be a hard conversation for you to have. And most of us are all, we only have two modes. We're either really, really nice and martyrs and, oh, I'm fine. I can give and give and give and give and I'm fine. Okay. Or, and that is not true. Or we have the other mode where we're, we come down harsh. Okay. And we, and we just, we're, we're so angry because we, we have given so much. Okay. So, so it's in between mode. It's calling a family meeting. Okay. It's calling them up, calling them up and saying, look, I don't know if you know this about me, but this is where I'm at. And I am no longer able to be short this kind of money. So we need to talk about a plan, a schedule for you to pay me back. Okay? You, you have a different tone, different energy to you. You're going to get a better response from them. Okay. So, I mean, prayer is awesome, but you need more than that from them. Okay. So, and it's the same, whatever else you're talking about. Um, it's this idea that, and go back and listen to what I talked to the other couple of women I talked to about this giving, 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 depleting our, our resources ourselves. Okay. You cannot come. There's a woman I'm, I'm talking to and her trigger is when what she is to be on the lookout for is when she feels like her resources have been depleted. And when she doesn't feel, when she feels low on resources, low on support, whatever area. Um, but when she feels low, that low point, that is her clue. That is her signal that she needs to pull back and stop giving so much. I mean, other people, men in particular do not have this problem the majority of them because they're socialized differently they're brought up differently it actually has nothing to do with gender it's just socialization and so for us okay just know someone else has no problem doing that and some women who've learned this you know who were never taught or who, who were taught by a mother or a grandmother who overcame that themselves and bucked the system i mean when when they were taught like that they learned this so there are women all the time who do what you feel like you can't do okay and there are women who go out there and they assert themselves. They don't have to be mean. They don't have to be angry, okay, out of control, because that's not good either. And they also don't have to be so passive. It's in between. They're able to be clear and firm, but loving and caring and kind, okay? We got to learn that. It took me a long time to figure that out between those modes. And we got to get over we got to learn the messaging where we feel like but you're being mean but that will be so mean but my kids won't love me but this guy will leave me if i ask for the money he owed me i can't believe how many women i've talked to who have lent money to these guys who could care less about you or they act like it i mean they get they put on a show but what how they treat you and and the money that, that you you have given them don't give any guy money don't give him i don't care what his story is I have just, and, and the havoc it wreaks trying to get that money back doesn't happen. So, all right. All right. Next one. Um, Donna, Donna, if you are here, I'm answering yours. Um, Donna writes, hi, Jane. So my problem with my current relationship that's two and a half years is his 35 year old daughter. They were estranged to her after he divorced her mother for five years. And when she had her third child, she decided to reconnect with her father. They've been reconnected for about three and a half years now. So only about a year prior to me coming into the picture. I've never had a cross word with a girl, with the girl I've never had an issue with her. I've gone so many places with her. We've gone on vacation together. So I'm really completely and totally mind blown as to what is going on. 
Okay. He has lived with me since March of 2020 and moved out last Thursday because of his daughter. At least that's what he tells me. I just don't know where to go from here. We communicate daily, but there's not a whole lot of affection or attention at this point because he is petrified to lose his daughter again. So I truly do not know what to do and I could really use some advice. Okay. So I think you've hit on it here, Donna, because he is petrified to lose his daughter again. That's really important here. Um, so he chose his daughter over you because he's got fears about losing her. Um, he feels something. I think what it is. So it sounds like this guy, because he, he divorced his, you know, he and his wife divorced her mother. He and her mother divorced, right? And she was estranged from him and he feels like he got her back. So I think what you've got to do, the issue is not with you. The issue is not with you. The issue is there's something in their relationship that they're repairing. And I, I think that is is what they're both focused on and his daughter is probably resentful because if she was estranged that tells me that there was probably something there where the mother was manipulated i hear about this all the time i work with women all the time who tell me these stories on our calls and um it can be really i mean you don't know what went on or maybe you have a feel for it but i mean something has happened there um and so this daughter is really trying to cope with this don't compete with his daughter okay do not compete with his with his daughter you won't win and you'll feel it, it won't work it'll backfire don't do that i don't think you have been at all but i think it's just there is a, a energy or a tension that uh, there that she feels that you you his, her mom has been replaced and obviously there was a lot of heavy heavy stuff that went down that that she was estranged from him for that long so it sounds like there were probably sides taking and all kinds of messy stuff so what i would say to do let him let him be if he felt like he had to move out because he needed to to you know please do what she wanted to do um let him let him have this time let him have this time if there's truly something there between the two of you he'll be back he will not go with anyone else this isn't about him um going for someone else this isn't about there being anything wrong with you this is or, or him choosing someone else he can't choose anyone as long as his daughter is is going through whatever she's going through and it sounds like she needs him right now and it sounds like he wants to be the father that he was never there for that five years okay so what i would do i would literally support him in this i had a i had a woman who literally reached out to me in between our, our sessions and she reached out to say that her this guy that things have been going so well with and all of a sudden she was so angry because she found out he told her that she he, he was babysitting the grandkids with his ex-wife and she lost it but luckily she reached out to me first I'm so glad she did because I talked her down off the ledge and and she was able to see that the fact that he wasn't lying to her about it he actually told her where he that he was babysitting with the the ex he told her everything was transparent he wasn't trying to hide it he told her when she asked him if i have anything to worry about he said no you have nothing to worry about this we don't have any feelings for each other this is just the grandkids it's just hard because we both don't see the grandkids that much and so we're we have this opportunity to see them and he talked her he helped um with her fears and then she wanted to go even more because she could not talk herself down so we talked about it and and she was able to get past it by recognizing this had nothing to do with her there was no threat to her it was simply the way it it is when you have exes and when there are grandkids and when there are ch grown kids and kids at all and i mean it, it is just complicated even with dogs it can get complicated when those are part of the ex stuff right so it just this can happen um so the best thing you can do is just give them some time give them some space just just do that um the more that you allow him to be master over this himself okay to feel empowered and support it to build some kind of a relationship with his ex here the better off that he, that i mean you're you're just everything will be so much better because he's going to remember that he will come back if, if there was something truly there he'll be back this is just a temporary thing and i know it's hard and you have to have a place to go with those feelings you have to have someone to vent to so make sure you've got your girlfriends or someone else because you've got to have someone to talk about this through with so that you don't feel like you're you're having to um keep your feelings hidden um and push your feelings down when you have you have every right to your feelings you have every right to be angry you have every right to be that but what i'm saying is that he is doing something totally separate from you in your relationship he's rebuilding whatever it is he felt he lost in those five years and they're they're having something there
that um, is, is something they need to do and has nothing to do with you. So I know that's so hard to do, but if you can think of it that way, I think it'll help a lot. All right. Okay, Donna, I know that's not easy though. All right. Um, Michelle, Michelle, I got your answer here. Um, Michelle, and I'm so glad you're here. You can hear my answer live. Um, Michelle wants to know how to deal with my current situation. Long story short, I was in an amazing long distance relationship with COVID when COVID hit. And yeah, the pandemic changed a lot for everybody. Some people got married. Sometimes some people worked amazing for. I have heard everything, the whole gamut. Others had, yeah, whole different things. So, okay. Um, my job went virtual. So I moved to him and we lived together for almost two years. Okay. Um, he developed PTSD. Um, he's a police officer. And we'd always talked about moving back to where I'm from. Once he was off, he, myself, and his therapist all agreed it was best for him to have a clean start. So we started purging the house. We even got an apartment to have in my hometown in case this sold quickly. So you're all set. Makes sense. I came back here and slowly he's getting worse. Okay, so he's moved with you and you've gone back and he's totally starting fresh, starting new. Came back here, slowly he's getting worse. I know the stress of all this so quickly is a lot for him. He keeps asking for space, which I'm giving, but everything is so up in the air and so terrifying. Oh, I hear you <laughs> and I see you here. I'm taking this time to work on me, but I just want to know how I'm supposed to act. Do I text? Do I not? Do I reassure him? Do I not? It's a lot. Yes, it is a lot. Oh, it is a lot. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Okay, Michelle, here's the thing. Um, it is a lot. He's going through his own personal crisis in addition to this relationship um, identity. Um, yeah, he's going through a lot. Um, I worked with police officers um, for years. Um, I worked at the Justice Institute in BC and um, I am familiar with all of that and some of the, yeah, there's some really, really, really good guys in it for the right reasons. And it sounds like you might be one of them. Um, but yeah, the stress. Okay, so what he's going to need, he does need space. He does need to, so let me tell you what space needs to him. Because space to us can be terrifying, frightening. Space means like, what's going to happen here? Space makes us feel so out of control. What he's asking for is to take this at his own pace. He's not saying he needs distance from you. He's not saying there's anything wrong with you. He is simply saying he does not feel in control. He does not. He feels out of his realm. He feels out of his out of his comfort zone. He's he is experiencing all of that. That is what he's saying. Okay. Do not take this personally. That is the most per, most important part of it that you can do. Don't take this on you. Don't make it into something else. Don't blow it up into something else that is one more stressor on him. Okay. You you can handle this. You can do this. I know you can. So what that means is this is something really good. I mean, I look at this, right? And obviously you two have something here. Okay. The fact that he went and got help, right? He's seeing a therapist. That's so commendable. I feel like this is, I feel like he's one of the good guys here. Um, this was a lot. This is a lot. We cope better because we're used to reaching out for help. He has been, he, he can't escape the fact that he has grown up not only in a, a gender and, and in an environment, and but everything, a culture, but even, I mean, this is a new thing to admit. I have PTSD. This is a new thing to admit that this job has traumatized me, that I have seen so much that it has just changed my view of the world and I can't cope and to ask for help. I mean, that's huge, huge. It is so hard for these men to ask for help. I mean, the suicide rate among police officers is, is is so high. I mean, and and I mean, there's there's so much here we could talk about. But anyway, what I want to say to you is, um, don't don't ask him for your reassurance. I want to reassure you everything's fine with the relationship. He would not be here. He would not have gone with you. He you've got two years in, and he came with you to your hometown. 
if it was personal, if it was about you, if there was a problem here, you would know. That's not what this is about. So I don't want you to do that. Um, I don't. I, I want to reassure you that this is not about you. I want to reassure you that everything is fine. I want to give you enough of that so that you don't have to burden him with anything more than he's already going through by asking him, how are we? How are things? And I don't know. I mean, you do your own version of that. I'm sure you know, you're know you going to say, I don't do that. And I know. You, but the point is, um, so I would keep it as much about like text him about day-to-day -day stuff that you need an answer to, right? Or text him about, but otherwise, I mean, essentially you're following his lead on what he's comfortable with. And then with all this other big energy you have, right? With all of this other energy and this, this, need to feel like everything's okay and that you're okay and all that you've got to get those needs met somewhere else even if it's just through having friends who can call or talk to i don't know is there a um um you know um police officer spouses support group or something like that a ptsd support i mean go get some help for yourself it's not uh, not that dissimilar from you know codependence anonymous or something like that right but if you have somebody who's going through something you need support so go find the right place for support for that and make sure you're getting it and 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 allow him to take the time he needs. He's going to love you so much for this. And and it's not one of those things that, well, you know, this is what we do. I'm going to go be a martyr now. You know, we've talked about that. Go rewind if you missed any of that. But, you know, we're not going to be martyrs. But what we're not going to do is we are not going to make everything about us to the extent that we make ourselves someone else's additional caretaking project that they have to take care of us and our feelings and our emotions and our needs in addition to everything that they're going through okay there's there's a middle ground so that you can look at it as well if everything is fine how much do how needy am i like if everything is fine because most I, correct me if i'm wrong but most of the neediness you're going to feel most of the the panic that you're going to feel that you're not um of not knowing where things are and not knowing how to act comes from the insecurity of being in this place, of, of being kind of in limbo while he sorts things out. I mean, it's so huge that he's sorting things out and that he's able to still um, functionally be with you here. So what I would do is I would do everything I said there. And, and but the most important thing is, um, you know, act, act how you would if everything was fine in terms of your relationship being fine. That's what I would do. So in terms of the texting and all that, um, you know, just anything, um, you know, reassuring him I, that can feel condescending. So in terms of, I would actually try to be supportive just in your energy. The more you have a supportive tone, the more you have an understanding and supportive tone, the more loving and giving and the more he will be able to give to you. Okay. So anyway, I, I hope that helps with that because it's tough, but yeah you can do that and what you'll have on the other side of that is a lot more than what you um would ever have if you pushed him further before he's ready because that's a big part of this there's the part about being a man in this okay and there's a lot of um that male i don't need help i it you know shame of asking for help all that so i'm thrilled that he even asked for help in the first place because that already took a lot Okay, um, Nancy, <laughs> Nancy, I got to you. And Nancy is a male friend uh, that she has a crush on. Okay, he acts like he's interested in me, but we don't seem to be progressing towards anything. What should I do? Okay, Nancy, I saved yours here towards the end um, because this is something that so many women go through, okay? So many women go through this because it's the what do I do? Like I'm, and this can go on for years. I don't know how long this has been going on for, but this can literally go on for years because men can be, these male friends can just be so wishy-washy. I mean, they can be so unclear and so indirect and you wonder, well, are they just shy? You know, it's really confusing. And, and how much should you say and how much should you try and how much, you know, there's all of that. And so what I would say on this is, um, he acts like he's interested. And this is always what messes us up, right? It's like, how do you know? I mean, he, I mean, they all do, or the majority of them. This is what I hear. It's, he acts like he's interested in me. I mean, I've had where they just, they do all but act like they're like almost dating you. And yet, nothing progresses. And so what do you do with that? 
and you don't want to be too forward. And most of you are like, well, I can't do that. And okay. So here's what I want you to do. What I want you to do is to, um, Take a serious look at how much you're initiating and how much he is. How one-sided is this? How much are you the one initiating everything? Like how much give and take in there is there? Because what you really need to do is take a step back and see what happens. Does he fill in the gaps? If you take a step back, is there silence? If you So basically, if you're not saying, hey, do you want to, you know, if you're not reaching out, talking to him, if, if you're not saying, hey, you know, inviting, I don't know what, what you're doing now, if you're, you know, going places, or if it's just conversation or what, what it is, but you got to look at if you weren't doing what you're doing, if you weren't initiating, if you were doing your part, what would, what would that look like? Would there be anything coming back to you? Would he be doing anything or would there be nothing happening? That's what I would look at. Cause if nothing is happening, if, if nothing, um, if he's not doing anything here, then, um, that's telling you something because you have to have something coming back. You have to have him doing something here. And if that is not, um, if you're doing all of the work, no matter how much he's interested, he's not interested enough to do something. And you absolutely need someone who's interested enough to do something because this, it, it, so let's say you do everything and let's say you get him to, the next stage and let's say you know you get, you get to where things are progressing a little bit you still got this guy who is progress anything is progressing only because of you and because all he's having to do is to accept invitations or to answer your texts or answer your mess i mean you're still if you're not okay with that i mean i i think this is where you size up what kind of relationship are you in here for do are you okay with doing everything are you okay with continuing to do everything are you okay if your entire relationship and whatever the future holds for you is you doing everything because that is what he's clearly telling you. If, if all of this is you, um, that's what he's telling you. So first I'd size that up, like look at who he actually is, not who you see the potential for him to be because people don't magically change when you get together and officially, they don't magically change. If someone is content with you initiating all this, he's going to always be content with you initiating all this. And so if that is not who you are, that you're okay with him initiating, or with, with, you're not okay with, with um, him not initiating, then, you know, you just, you need to know that, okay? Because it's clear, it's clear that there is, um, yeah, you, 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 you want the relationship that you can actually handle, not the one that you think is going to change if you just behave a certain way. Because the bottom line is, this guy is who he is, and a guy who is content to have a woman doing all the initiating is a guy who is just that that's the relationship he wants and this belief because i see this all the time we have this belief it's going to change that is not that's a fairy tale that's a fantasy it's not going to happen so um yeah and and if that's the case if you can accept him the way he is again it goes back to that then you're the initiator and this is the role but make sure you can accept it first okay all right, um, I'm going to do one more here, and then um, um, and then Misty, I'm going to come to you, okay? Um, I booked this. I got a festival to, or, or kind of a street fair thing to go to tonight. Um, it's kind of cool, so uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little short tonight. Um but every one of you who sent me something, um, I'll save those up for the next one too, okay? Um, before I get to the next one, um, I offer coaching. Um, email coaching is my most affordable option for those of you who it's more of an investment for you. I will tell you that the one-on-one -on -one, um, phone or um, Zoom um, coaching, you're going to get the most from because I get the back and forth and I get your energy right away. So I can read a lot from your emails, um, but the really good stuff where when I say we do one session and it's like life changing, those are when like we can go back and forth and I can ask everything I need of you to get so clear on who we're talking about, what he's like and what you're like and what's going on. So I will say that that is the most. And um, yeah, so anyway, um, 
let me know. And if, if you need a special offer on that, you let me know. Okay. I don't, I don't want anyone to be, um, I don't want anyone who's in dire straits to be in dire straits. It's miserable. It's an awful place to be. And sometimes it is not just this heavy, you know, long-term thing. I need therapy. I need all this, you know, um, the best advice I ever got to turn my own life around and why I'm such a believer in coaching is literally because I, um, my, my mode, <laughs> my MO has always been to go to, you know, the therapist who's like, you know, promises the world. And I, I go there and I, I say, okay, fix me. You know, I'm, I'm completely, you know, I need all this help. You know, that was always my thing. I'm, I'm obviously there's something so wrong with me because I can't get this right. You know, and the most honest counselor I ever went to, he said to me, um, you need a cheerleader. You don't need any long-term therapy. There's nothing wrong with you. He was so honest. He said, you need a cheerleader. And I took that advice to heart and I have never, ever been able to find any advice that was single life-changing advice than get a cheerleader, get someone. If I had to do it all over again, I would have found a coach early on and I would have done this properly from the start because I had no idea the power of having someone who believed in me, who could actually see me. It wasn't just giving me BS, but actually could see me and understood me. And, and you know who that person will always be? It's someone who, who resonates with you. Someone who you see them and you're like, well, that's like me. She's like me. Like finding someone who is actually coping, who's actually doing what you want to be able to do and is, is able to be real with you and authentic and you identify enough. That's, that's your person. So I don't know who, you know, if that's me, great. If there's someone else, you know, if you can enlist a friend to do that, great. But you know, a lot of times our friends are only human, right? So anyway, you get what you, uh, you look for and what you ask for. So, all right. So this one is from, um, Okay. She did not have her name on here. It's S. How do we even get started? Online dating didn't yield results for me. Okay. And, and there were three others, at least, who I'm thinking of, um, who came in asking about that. Um, and I was hoping to get all, to all of them. I'm going to lump you all together because you're all under the category of online dating didn't do it for me. Okay. So how do we get started? Um, Lolly, I think this was yours as well. So essentially... I, so many people have, so it is really hard to make online dating work for you when you are a feeler, when you are an energy person, when you're a spark, when you're like life, when you, when there's so much to you that is just real and authentic. And, and so no wonder online dating doesn't work if you fit into that class. Okay. Cause I hear that all the time. My most sparkliest, sparkliest uh, clients um, who do coaching with me, they come to me because online dating isn't working and it's because it's not a match for everybody. So I say all kinds of avenues you try, try all different mediums. But if you are one of these um, sparkly people with all this energy, okay, and, and if you're here, I'm sure most of you are, but um, online dating may be tougher for you. Okay, and I say keep doing it, keep your options open. But beyond that, what I want to tell you is get started with being as much of you as you possibly can. Okay, the more that you understand who you are, like the deeper stuff, like the one I talked to, go back to that little girl who saw the world the way she saw it before anyone told her how she was supposed to see it or how she was supposed to behave or what it was supposed to look like to her. Okay, go back to that. Get back and get clear on the essence of you. And what do you want to do? Who? Wh what do you find yourself happiest doing? Go do that. Because the people you meet through that and the the types of people, this is about connections. This is about finding people. This is about you meet someone and then you meet their friends or you meet their family or you meet people they're connected with. Like attracts like. So you're going to be around people who are like you, who are going to have friends like you, and you're going to find people who are actually good matches, friendships and romantic stuff. Okay. But the idea, I mean, I think a big part of this, someone, um, Adriana, I don't know if Adriana's on here, but Adriana was, um, talking about this today, um, in response to one of my posts that, you know, this idea that we are supposed to be good at online dating or good at meeting people, 
you know, there's such a shame that we can carry with us because when it's not something that we find easy or when it doesn't happen as easily for us, we can feel this thing of, well, I was supposed to be good at it. If there's something wrong with me. So, you know, what? then it feels like they're just, there's, there's something wrong with me. It's hopeless. I'm not gonna be able to do this. So it's like expecting yourself to be really good at something when you are not because you've never been affirmed you've never been supported you've never been had any you've never had anyone get excited about who you are that is a really hard place to jump in then to i'm going to go on online dating i'm going to go meeting people and i'm going to do this successfully when you've never had a model for like how to be successful how to be exciting how to be loved how to be cared about how to be thought well of okay so i mean the biggest thing here is you know you're not supposed to be something you're not. And if you're not good at something, that's not a fault of yours. It's just you're better at other things, you know, and the idea that, you know, so how do you get started? Okay, if you want to get started with online dating, like um, look for friends, look for someone you could be friends with first, like look for, I mean, that's the most ideal thing is someone you can actually talk to, someone you can connect with. I mean, the attraction will follow. I can't believe how many women I talk to who um, are married happily. And it's like they tell me how they barely even, you know, had an interest in their their husband in the beginning when they met him. You know, I mean, even my own husband. I met my husband twice. The first time, both of us gave each other up. You know, we went on one date. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I guess it's not quite <laughs> everything amazing. You know, and it's just we were ready. I was still looking for my bad boy thing. You know, I wanted my tight. You know, I wanted this fast and you know, all this other stuff. And, you know, and he didn't want a, uh, a Klingon. He didn't want some, and I just, you know, moved down, um, moved to you know, Southern California. Anyway, my point is people find each other all the time and they find each other under really interesting circumstances. And the easiest way to find someone is literally just understanding who you are, what lights you up and go, go do those things that light you up. And if you're online, if you're online, the, the thing with online is don't have expectations that it's going to be any certain way. Just go in and make friends. Go in and be conversational. Go in and just have fun. Go in and just see who shows up. Be curious. Be curious. Be curious. Curiosity is the number one trait that, that creates light and energy and excitement. Okay, do that. And then know, you know, if, if yeah, it's just one thing of all the different things there. All right, Lolly heard me. Uh, Misty, um, Misty says he broke it off with me, but he calls or texts me asking what I'm doing all the time. He's also started a new relationship. Should I continue to be friends? Okay, so he calls or texts you because one of two reasons: he either wants to still have some control over you, or because he's holding out for at some point, um, if it doesn't work out with her, he wants to make sure you're there for backup. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to be friends with that? Okay, do you want to keep something going? Do you want to keep his hope alive? Do you want to keep the possibility going that it's all still going to be there? Um, you know, do, what does it cost you? What does it cost you? I will tell you this. Um, the feel that I get from the way you, what you said there, the energy I'm picking up on from that tells me that um, it's probably going to cost you too much. I think it might be costing you already too much to be friends. So honestly, he needs to go into this. I will tell you this. I don't think that new relationship is going to go anywhere. No guy is asking you, calling you or texting you, asking you what you're doing all the time when he started a new relationship that's actually worth something, that he's actually invested in. So the way I'm reading this is that this is not, you know, I don't think you have anything to worry about here. I don't think he's going to go be with her. I don't think this is permanent. There's no way. He's still stuck in it with you. Yeah, he's, you still love him. And he probably still has feelings for you. I don't know what was wrong with the relationship, but I think that's what he's doing is he's jumping in here and he is, um, he's hoping to escape something. He's looking for the grass is green. The grass is not green. The grass is temporary. <laughs> Whatever it is doing over there. So, um, you know what? I, I will tell you this. I think in my experience, what I have seen over and over again, predominantly, is that if you are slower to answer, I don't think you have to, I don't think it's an official thing, do I continue to be friends or not? What I would say is take longer to answer them. 
um, take a couple of days to answer them. Have him be in the background, okay? Have him be in the background. He, he doesn't mean a whole lot to you. He's just some guy. He's temporarily with this woman, and then that will calm you down, okay? There is no way. This is the beginning phase of his relationship with her. This is the exciting phase. There is no way that if he's already communicating this much with you, that this is something amazing and awesome. I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. If this was truly something that he was going to stick to, you would not have this amount of contact, this level from him. So that's what I would do. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, if you're listening to the recording, back up and you can hear the rest of it. Um, for those of you, um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to more. Um, if, if you sent me that, I will save it for next time. We'll do another one. Um, for any of you who need an answer quicker, want some help quicker, like I said, um, check out my website on my work with me page at, at gettingtotruelove.com. Um, under work with me, you'll see all my different options there. And, um, you know, you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish in one session. Um, you know, and, and yeah, send me an email if you're struggling and, and, you know, finances are a real issue. We'll talk. All right, everyone, you take care. Enjoy your Saturday night, Sunday morning, wherever I've been with you. I love spending my Saturday nights with you. I love miss it. So, um, all right. Take care. And I'll talk to you soon. See you soon.